perfectly prolific peppers. This is why we grow them. This is what we hope for. It's why we sow our seeds early with care, tend to the young seedlings with diligence, harden off the plants with patience, and give them the best spots in our gardens as though no other crops existed. And on top of all this, despite the preferential treatment and the extra mile taken, there's still the idea that if we do this one more thing, we'll have unlimited pepper bounty. That's right, once again, we're talking about pruning your peppers. Not a delicate trimming, but the literal cutting in half of the young plants way back in the spring. Six months later, four garden beds, 48 square feet of growing space, and 72 pepper plants total. Let's finally put to rest that age old question of whether or not we should be pruning our peppers. Before we get to the analysis, let's discuss how we got here and what we hope to achieve when this all started nearly six months ago. About six weeks after first seeding my pepper plants back in February, two weeks after replanting them from plug to nursery pots, I took half a test set of 72 plants and clipped off the top one to two nodes. Why on earth would we do this? Well, it wasn't without theory and that theory wasn't without merit. Proponents of pepper pruning suggest that by eliminating the top node, the plants will then be forced to create new leaders from the nodes directly below the cut. And they're right, the plants do exactly this. It's a well-known practice in the horticultural world and the science supports it. Apical meristems, the top shoots of a plant, produce a growth inhibiting hormone known as auxins that they send downwards to prevent the lower branches from growing vertical. Otherwise, our pepper plants wouldn't grow outward and each node would compete for leadership. The whole phenomenon was discovered in 1934 and it's known as apical dominance. Time for a road trip. There's a patch of trees just a few kilometers north of here that'll help me demonstrate my point. Some trees such as these Lombardi poplars here, have actually had the auxins bred out of them. Which is why they exhibit what's known as fastigiate branching. Essentially, all the shoots point upwards. Every single shoot is a leader. Ornamentally, it's quite unique, and some people like it. In a plant like a pepper, however, removing that top shoot causes the lateral buds below to spring into action. Shooting upwards, assuming the leadership role and instigating a whole new branching system going forward. And this is done times two, because there's always two lateral meristems waiting to branch out on each node. So a simple act of cutting off the leader can actually double the growth of your pepper plants. That's pretty crazy. Okay, the theory proves out. The plants branch like mad and double the growth should mean double the peppers, right? Well, not so fast. Let's look anecdotally on how I perceive the growth and production of the 36 pruned pepper plants versus the non-pruned ones. And then we'll get into the hard numbers to get a more concrete answer. Early on, clipping the peppers certainly caused them to bush out more, producing more branches and more foliage. It also seemed to set them back. Not a lot, but at least a couple of weeks, if not more, for some specimens. The non-pruned plants were definitely harvested first. In fact, those plants left alone had a first wave of harvest before the pruned plants even got to golf ball size. On top of that, the peppers from the pruned plants, they never really got that big anyways. Was this because there was more peppers in the pruned specimens versus the non-pruned ones? Well, we'll have to look at the numbers to see for sure. One other thing that I observed was that the peppers from the pruned plants 
were not only not as big, their walls didn't seem as thick. Again, just an anecdotal observation, but I did make note of it. Okay, before we dive into the hard numbers, let's think about why we appeared to get the results that we got. Pruning the pepper plants definitely gave us more foliage and in turn seemed to support more flowers and thus more fruit. But the fruit itself was smaller, thinner, and took longer to reach first harvest. This tells me that pepper plants, at least a large bell variety like the one I'm growing, only have the capacity to support a finite amount of fruit. Yes, the pruning caused more branching, more flowering and more fruit, but it was in vain. The plants couldn't take advantage of it. This could definitely be due to the variety of pepper I grew, as smaller varieties like halves and cayennes may just explode with multiples of their tiny fruits. And it could also be due to my season being finite, with all the growth happening between April and September. Definitely something to consider when looking at these results. All right, enough guessing. Let's look at the hard numbers to decide once and for all if we should be pruning our pepper plants. From the 36 non-pruned pepper plants, we harvested 216 peppers for a total weight of 104 pounds or 47 kilograms. This gave us an average weight of 220 grams per pepper and a total value of $415 Canadian, taking into account the price of $3.99 a pound for red bell peppers. From the 36 pruned pepper plants, we got 241 peppers total at a weight of 85 pounds or 38.5 kilograms. This gave us an average pepper weight of about 160 grams. Total value of the harvest is $339 or 18% less than if we had just left the plants alone in the spring. Before setting out to make this video, I determined, randomly mind you, that any discrepancy 10% or less was just gonna be margin of error. The fact that we harvested from the pruned plants over 18% less peppers, that really stands out. To me, that can't be ignored. So much so that in my opinion, pruning peppers is not only not beneficial in terms of more pepper production, but I'd go as far to say is that it can actually decrease your production. I say that with a caveat, however, as we do have to consider my finite growing season. As well, my choice of a large, long to grow variety of bell pepper. But looking at the results, both qualitatively and quantitatively, over the span of 72 plants is no small data set. That's six dozen plants over the course of 180 days in fairly controlled conditions. I really feel like finally we can put this one to rest. Unless of course you live in a climate where your peppers can grow as perennials or you're growing the small fruiting varieties. Other than those two factors, I recommend skipping the pruning process for peppers altogether. Try to focus more on the things that matter, such as soil building, proper mulching, location, and the other aspects of pepper growing that have far more impact. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.